Welcome back to Viewer Game Analysis. In this one, we're going to have two FIDE rated players, roughly around 1900, in an interesting game. And let's dive right into it. And I've done a series before on the Czech Benoni. And this particular move order, it does give black some extra options. And the lower rated of the two players were black here. I mean, they're pretty similar in rating, so it doesn't make too much of a difference. But say if I was playing someone three or 400 rating points lower, or they are much, much older than I am, and I think they're not up on modern theory, I would go for B5 here as it's very easy for white to go wrong in these positions and there's a lot of options which look very natural and after say bishop g5 queen b6 we get a very dynamic and interesting position so you want complications when favorable keep that in mind but if you're prepared you're playing against someone that he feels very prepared, staying with something more standard. D6, good to go. And knight C3, already this is a move that I'm a big advocate of. Typically, I don't like to have the, the knight on F3 yet, but should make too much of a difference. It should transpose for white. Uh, as this is not quite a Benoni, as the pawn needs to be on C4 for a Benoni. And E5 locked up check Benoni structure and the thing is about the check Benoni I personally like the opening but it went out of style I want to say in around the time computers started getting really good you can find some great games by like Yasser Sirawan in the 90s maybe even the early 2000s but yeah definitely 90s for Sirawan but then after that I don't think any any strong grandmasters really touch the opening, even in surprise value. Uh, it It's tough. You can check the engine all throughout the opening. Like, for instance, bishop e7, natural move by black. And I think this was more white was not very well prepared for this particular line and move order because white already has a substantial edge. And I've covered positions very similar to this in the complete 1d4 repertoire that's in our playlist on the Palm Beach Chess channel. So say, for instance, bishop b5 check is a forcing way to try to get black to, to make a mistake. Bishop d7, not good because you need that bishop as an attacker later as you're going to be breaking on f5 and for kingside attacks. Same principle with the king's Indian defense. You, you really need to maintain this bishop. So knight bd7 is natural. And... The two places where black can play for expansion, since the center is locked, is on the king side with f5 and on the queen side with b5. So we're going to play to shut these down with white. So a4, and notice how with the bishop retreat, we are eyeing both break squares. Very important. Prophylaxis against future play. And now, what's white's plan in these structures? Well, we're going to utilize the fact that there's not anything on c4 yet. And following a previous game between Hernandez, Munoz, Barcelona 2021, a5 was played. I believe the engine liked knight c4 a bit better because black is able to play b5. And though you have the weak pawn, at least you're not in a bind. If you let white set up the bind, he's already plus two. And from the line with bishop b5 check, it's like a pawn and a half edge for white. It's, it's kind of ridiculous, and it shows why a lot of players won't, won't touch these types of closed positions. But, of course, it must be noted that the engine doesn't always properly evaluate closed positions. They seem to detest them as engines get stronger and stronger. But humans still have to play the game. Well, in the main game, bishop e2 was played. We both tuck the nuggets away. Castle, castle. Knight bd7. And this next move, h3. And according to our submitter, played presumably to pre prepare bishop e3, a rather rare move in practice. And 
honestly, all, all this is going to do is help with potential kingside attacks later. Um, you don't really need to play bishop e3. You need to be doing these types of ideas for white positionally. So h3, kind of a waste of move. Knight e8, and black is going for the general break pran. Can't talk this, this video, pran. Going for a natural break plan. So we need to get the knight out of the way to play for f5. That's, that's going to be critical. So first we go knight e8, and then g6, and we're looking to Fianchetto the knight as we have the full support to be able to play f5. So here is a critical moment. White plays knight d2, but typically you want to play queen d2. And the rationale is good bishop agrees with the pawn structure. Bad bishop can only defend the locked pawn structure in the center. So black typically plays bishop g5. And after knight g7, this is following a game a4, a6, where you play for b5 from Austria 2010 between two FM slash IM strength FIDE rated players. That game eventually ended in a draw. But I kind of like the way our, our submitter played the game, keeping tension and going for f5 immediately. And here, white should definitely take the opportunity to play bishop h6 and a4. And this is going right along with the scheme that white has been needing to play. But again, I, I don't like having h3 because it gives us, gives us potential later to be able to attack. You can see as the knight moves and the queen gets to g5, the h3 pawn can definitely be a liability. So coming back after f5 in the main game, e f4 was played, and this type of dynamic approach, it it's going to give black key squares for his pieces. And though white's completely developed, I think this this move is is questionable. And I mean the engine may say you're at equality, but you were much worse with, with black only a few moves ago. And this gives kind of a springboard initiative. And it's very difficult to play these positions accurately, especially if you don't like being attacked and you feel like your opponent's getting some initiative. But it's it's a good moment if you're a pause your video and figure out, you know, best play for white. So I'll give you a second and see see if you can come up with a critical plan here. All right, in the game, Bishop g4 was played with the idea of, I want to trade off my bad bishop, which normally I, I would be a big fan of that, but here, black is still cramped. You got to jump on him before he fixes everything in the position, and white has this interesting move, g3, to break up the extra space, and this will maintain the balance. If not, white will be slightly better. So you got to find these these difficult moves which feel awkward to play, but both kings are going to be open and white still has the better coordination as the position blows open. But in the main game, bishop g4 and now knight e5. And note from the submitter, I can understand that white wanted to swap off his bad bishop, but he spent three tempi to exchange it for a piece that had not moved yet. And I'm inclined to agree in this situation, even though it is a closed position, black has space on the king side to be able to attack. So even though we're getting rid of that attacker that could potentially capture on h3 at some point, we're no longer in so much of a bind and that, that we're typically in in these types of Benoni-like positions and we have a clear plan to play for the attack. So queen e2, knight f6, back rank start, starting to get working, and here another opportunity. White must play g3, because after this, 
black has a very, very stable plus. Cramped positions, you want trades. Black's position improved considerably by getting a set of knights off the board. And we still have like a6b5 plans as well as pressing at our leisure on the king side. So knight d1, very flexible, eyeing critical squares. King h8, rook g8 is also in the cards. So after a4, stopping the b5 expansion, <clears throat> I don't mind bishop f6 at all. And after g3, too little too late to try to play this break. It was good earlier, now it is absolutely terrible. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely going sideways for white. It's hard to recommend anything other than just sit, but when your opponent's attack is gradually winding up, it's, it's hard to sit. And here you got two options. You can play f3 or queen takes h3. So what are you feeling here? I mean, honestly, I like the bind. So I'm, I'm going with f3 without a doubt. And probably trying this and not being such of a bind. But I mean, now you have queen takes h3 and just pain forever. But queen b5 was attempted. And that's, that's not going to help you. The f3 pawn is a monster. We're threatening mate. And it's just too little, too late. Check with the discovered attack on the rook. White has no counterplay. And things just <laughs> fell apart just like that. Now, overall, black played very well in this game and had a good command of the ideas. I would say to, to be wary, though, with playing the Benoni-esque positions because they're getting harder and harder to defend with modern chess. And I think it's great in fast time controls. I do not believe the submitter told me the time controls for this game, but I'm assuming it was a, a longer time control game. Um, surprise value, I think, is it's, it's good for that and fast time controls, but... Yeah, with modern day preparation and everybody being able to see accounts online and entire databases of players' games with a couple minutes notice, I wouldn't play it too frequently. Just my advice. Hopefully you enjoyed this viewer game analysis. And if you're interested in submitting your game to the channel, whoop, right up here, you will find, I think right there, my email. And you can send stuff to me. That way, so you can communicate with me directly. I appreciate your ongoing support. Thanks.